So sometimes growth feels very uncomfortable. It's almost like you're losing instead of winning. So in today's show, I'm going to share the growing pains and overcoming the uncomfortable feelings of growth. And sometimes you may not feel like you're winning or you're receiving rewards when you're growing, but you are actually expanding. We're talking about growing pains, all about growing pains and overcoming the loss. Because, you know, sometimes growth feels like you're losing when you're actually aligning and expanding. It often feels like, you know, when you're growing, you're you're ending some things, you're letting go of some things, you're letting go of some people, you're letting go of some habits, some patterns in your life. But this is you growing, but it often feels like you're losing, you're overcoming the loss and the growing pain. And so today, I just want to encourage you because a lot of you, you may have been, you may be in a season right now where you feel like things are just not lining up for you. You may feel like you're losing in some situations. Some things may feel like they're not working out in your favor. You may feel like some people did you wrong. Some people left you. Relationships ended. Opportunities ended. Things kind of just came to an end in your life. And you may be feeling like, how am I growing? How is this good? How am I improving when everything seems to be falling apart? But I'm here to encourage you today that really you are growing growing. This is part of growth. And you got to understand that growth feels uncomfortable at times. You know, growth isn't always packaged in rewards. You're not going to always feel like you're winning when you're growing. You're often going to feel like you're losing. You're often going to feel like you, you may even feel lonely. You may feel like people aren't there because see things begin to shift. But you got to understand that this is the process process you're in now. And so what you got to do is you got to become comfortable in this growth. You got to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. So you got to, you know, get comfortable with your new norm, get comfortable with your new elevation. So when you're in that growing process, you're you're doing things, you're going after your goals, you're going after, you know, you want to be healthier, you want better relationships. Sometimes you got to get uncomfortable, you got to do some things you're not used to doing. You got to change the way you're eating. You got to get some different sleep patterns. You got to let go of some of the conversations you had in the past. They don't feel right anymore. The things that you did before that you enjoy may not feel comfortable anymore. And you know, some conversations, some close friends you may have had at one point in time in your life, you're no longer close with them anymore. This is your growth season. This is your evolving season. So you just got to get to a place where you say, you know what, this is where I am. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to evolve from it. I'm not going to tell myself that I'm losing. I'm not going to tell myself that I'm lonely. I'm not going to tell myself that I'm in a negative place because God is turning this around for my good. I can use this situation that I'm dealing with right now and I can use it to work together, to evolve, to get better, to get stronger, to get wiser. And I am going to continue to grow. Here's another thing. You've never been the version of yourself that you are now. Mm, I'm going to say that again. You've never been the version of yourself that you are now. So here's the thing. You got to be patient with yourself. You got to be patient with your process. You've never been who you are right now. So you got to embrace her, embrace the new you, embrace you for all that you are and be patient with your process because sometimes you may stumble. Sometimes you may not get it right. Sometimes you may make the wrong decision, but guess what? You can wake up the next day and say, I'm going to do better. I'm going to keep striving. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep evolving. I'm not going to allow this one moment, this one situation that may not feel right. I'm not going to allow that to hold me back. 
I'm going to continue to strive forward. So you got to understand that you've never been the version of yourself that you are now. So be patient in that process. It's uncomfortable. It feels uncomfortable. You like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I going through this? Why are these thoughts coming to me? Why am I fearful? Why am I dealing with this anxiety? This because you are growing. It's because you are evolving. It's because you need to stop and allow the new you to evolve the new you to be the new you to expand to what you are called to do to what you are moving for and stop looking back stop dwelling on the past stop focusing on what was and allow what's new to be born to evolve to unfold and blossom in your life who's ready say I'm ready I'm ready for the new me I'm ready I am the new me go ahead and type it in I am the new me and the new me is better is wiser is healthy healthier stronger than ever before i'm gonna leave you with this last tip then we're gonna get into some good stuff i got some questions i got some good things i want to share with you guys but i want you guys to really take this last tip that i'm gonna give you and I really, I'm, I'm, when I say it, I want you to type it in the comments because this needs to resonate with you and you need to keep this with you throughout this whole entire day and even throughout this week. You want to keep this with you. But here's the, here's the final tip I'm going to give you in this message. Learn the power of silence. Now I'm going to say that again. Learn the power of silence. When I tell you it is time for you to be slow with your words, you don't have to always say what's going on. You don't have to always tell people what dreams you have, what visions you have. Learn the power of of silence you don't have to always point out to that other person what they're doing wrong or try to get them to see things the way you see them or try to argue your point when someone is totally off or, or try to get someone to change their mind when they're doing something wrong learn the power of silence the more you become silent the more you're going to learn the more you're going to grow in wisdom the more you're going to be able to see things more clearly you're going to be begin to even evolve your life more and, and work and manifest even better the things that you desire in your life as you begin to be silent with those things as you begin to keep them in your space of sacredy that they're in your sacred space you it's between you and God some things you got to just keep between you and God okay some things you got to keep between you and God and you got to be okay with that you got to be okay with not needing other people's opinion, not needing other people's validation and not needing other people to share their thoughts on what they think you should do. Just that sentence of alone, learn the power of silence can evolve you to levels you have never experienced in your life. Just being able to have certain goals for yourself, to have a plan for yourself and not to tell a soul. <laughs> to keep it between you and God and really to just own it and nurture it, nurture it in your faith, nurture it in you as you evolve and continue to grow in your life. You're going to see things I'm telling you overcome it. It's, it's happening. It's happening for you. So let me get into this. I got some questions. Somebody asked me a question of how do I embrace growth while feeling loneliness and pain after going through a divorce? OK, so I want to answer this question. Someone sent me this question. I'm going to answer this question before I get to this question. I want to share a new promotion that I'm offering you guys. I have a program, a bundle called Learn to Love Yourself Bundle. It comes with two books, Undeniable Breakthrough, which is the life journal that I wrote uh, you are enough which is one of my bestseller books as well and then it comes with two virtual webinars self-love webinar and the emotional wounded healing webinar so you can get that and my team is putting the link they just put the link in the comment section at reallove experts.com 
forward slash back to love. All right. You want to check that out. Learn to love yourself. It's time to grow. So I'm going to get to this question. She said, how do I embrace growth while feeling loneliness and pain after going through a divorce? Let's get into it. But before we answer that, I want to go ahead and invite my husband to come on and join us. Mr. Patrick Howard, you want to join us in? Can you imagine what she's dealing with right now and how she's feeling? Actually, no. I mean, Just, it's, it's, it, it's a challenging, I know, divorce. what I've heard about divorce is, is that it's an, a challenging moment. And, you know, I don't even want to imagine myself to be experiencing uh, that type of grief and, and hardship. You know, yeah. Because I, I know that it could be, you know, very uh, challenging for people and, to handle. And you hit it on the nose because it is a grief. It's like mourning the loss or the death of a relationship. Like if someone lose someone or they, you know, a person dies, it's like the death of a relationship. So it is a process. And even people who aren't going through a divorce, who maybe just went through a breakup or a separation, who had years of being in that relationship, they can go through a process of pain. So I can understand how, you know, we all can understand the feeling of pain and loneliness to a certain extent, you know, even if you haven't been through a divorce. But I think just understanding first of all, if you're watching your question, um, I just want you to know that you're not alone. I really want to encourage you to get a support system around you, whether it's virtual, you know, just connecting with people who went through what you went through or who are going through what you're going through and really know that you're not alone. So you don't have to feel lonely. You can um, be deliberate about connecting with like minded people, people who are inspiring, who want to grow, who want to get better, who want to heal. First of all, I want to say that sometimes when you're growing, that is what you're dealing with. You feel the growing pains. You feel the uncomfortable feelings because this is not who you're used to being. You're not used to what you are evolving to. You know, I know for me, me having becoming more of a healthier person and going to the gym and and meal prepping and things like that, that was very uncomfortable. That was a struggle. And going to the gym, working out with a trainer who I just, she just seemed to push me beyond my limits. And sometimes I had an attitude about it. Let's just be honest. Come on. Because sometimes when you're growing, you might get an attitude. You might get frustrated. You may, you know, become emotionally bothered. Understand that it's okay. Be patient with yourself in this process. Just tell, you know, sometimes you got to talk to yourself. I have to talk to myself. Listen, and it's okay. I know you're upset, but you're growing. You can do this. You you got it. You've improved so much. Look at how far you've come. You didn't think you can make it this far. Look at what you're doing. Take it each moment at a time and really pour into yourself. Yeah, I think that that's key. You know, taking it each moment at a time, not being hard on yourself because it is a challenging situation to get over. So you don't want to rush your process. You know, allow yourself that opportunity to go through those feelings, but know that you're attached to the purpose and where you see yourself being at the end of the day. So like Randy said, just know you're not alone in the process and you can uh, take care of yourself in the process of, of grieving while you're still growing. Yeah, yeah. So this next question, uh, let's see. What can I do to start building my self-esteem? Yes, I love that question. First of all, building your self-esteem starts with you spending time with yourself. For me, what helped me, I I love taking like walks in nature. It re- I really feel connected to God and I really feel connected to myself in an intimate way when I'm out near the trees and I'm going on a walk. So really find something that you can begin to do and enjoy by yourself. That's the first, I will say that's the beginning of it. And then as you're doing that, begin to accept yourself wherever you are. Maybe there's some things you want to work on. You want to improve. Maybe you want to go back to school. You want to lose weight. You want to get married, whatever. It all starts with you. No matter what it is you want to do, even if it, even if it's you being in a relationship, it's going to start with you doing the self-love, the self-care, the feeling better about yourself. 
that's how you begin to attract better relationships and, and you know, someone who's willing to love you the way you deserve to be loved. What, what would you say? Well, and I say the key to uh, building self-esteem is really affirming yourself. You know, mm-hmm. taking those moments daily to say affirmations and speak life over yourself and to take a moment, look at yourself while you're saying them, you know, to get them inside of you so that you can really believe and encourage you really speaking to yourself to encourage yourself, yes. you know, so that you can you know, feel the joy, feel the peace, feel the the comfort and contentment and who the who God created you to be without the um, the impact or the imp- impression of others, you know, and mm. what others may see, you know, more so, you know, you walking in the light that, you know, God has placed in you. And it's not a reflection of what other people say or what other people believe, but it's all based on what you know already. Yeah, where you don't have to get it from another person. Yeah. And that's so important. We have a question. How do I get over anxiety and what does it mean? When you can't sleep at night. And she also mentioned that meanwhile she's trying to overcome a toxic relationship. That's a really good question. And I can say I experienced anxiety. I experienced insomnia where I had trouble sleeping before years ago in my life. I even wrote about it in my book, Miracles in Your Mouth. And really that's just a sign that it's time for you to nurture yourself. It's time for you to begin to pour into yourself. You, you're in a place where where you've depleted, you've given it your all, you're exhausted, you you almost you, like an empty cup, like you just, you over poured yourself. And so now you're so depleted where you're anxious, you, you're having trouble sleeping, you're stressed because there's nothing no substance left in you and then you're in a toxic relationship which is continuing draining you so your self-care has to be priority it's like you it's like you know somebody's rushed to the emergency room it's like you need a rush to your self-care you need a rush to your prioritizing yourself mind body and spirit things that help me in that process in my life um, meditation helped me tremendously I basically exercise helped me tremendously. I had to change some things that I were eat, I was eating, which affected me to help me to sleep better. Exercise helped me to feel better and sleep better. I had saw a counselor that helped somewhat. You just got to do it. You got to try it. Whatever is going to help you, you just got to be so focused on what's best for you right now. And whatever's going on in the relationship and other people, you cannot focus on that. You got to rescue yourself at this point. Yeah. Yeah. The self-care has to be top priority at this point. Number one priority, mind, body and spirit. When you get up in the morning, it's about you. If you need, I don't know, you may have kids, but you need to wake up early. You need to make sure that you giving yourself your time you can no longer neglect you at this point she said what can i do to not attract married men well i actually did a video about this Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't know if y'all seen this video but i have this video promoted now it's called um don't be the other woman don't be a side chick and and i share some tips in there but if you're attracting married men it's probably because you you are unavailable emotionally yourself where you may be fearful of close intimate relationship with one man or you may like the convenience of married men because married men they go back to their wives and they don't have you don't have to you know really do much work (laughs) that it's just you're just there when they want to you know whatever really working on you learn to love yourself bundle that would be a great course for you to start in some books Cause, cause you can attract married men, but you don't have to get involved with those married men. Like I've, it's men that approached me that were married, but that don't mean I'm gonna get involved with them. It's a difference. You just gotta know. What would you say? What advice would you give? How to not attract the married men? Yeah, <laughs> I, that's a challenging question. I mean, because uh, if a married man is is pursuing somebody single, I mean that's something that they want to do. They and self. it tells you what kind of man he you is. Know. So 
I mean, I wouldn't take the responsibility and say, oh, I'm attracting all the married men. I mean, they have control over their own self. They they making them choices, too, you know. I think it's it's a matter of what they what they do and, and how they desire doing things. But, you know, I think that if you truly desire a relationship and you, you know, you aligned with the uh, relationship, the type of man that you desire, they basically uh, you'll meet that guy. You know, and he won't be married for sure. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for these questions. We like those questions. We like these kind of questions. So, hey, what else? What we got? She said, what if you still have to do business with a recent ex? How do you accomplish it in the middle of being heartbroken? That's a challenging one, you know, especially when it comes to doing business with somebody. You got to set some real strong boundaries when it comes to having that business relationship and separating that personal you know, when you're still working together, you got to be real firm and a, and a stickler when it comes to working in, in corporate America uh, and how people have different interactions with different people. They don't always have the same same type of responses to, say, a person they'd have a personal relationship with as they do with somebody they have a business relationship with. In that type of in- involvement, and engagement, you got to turn on uh, this business all the time business only and keep it strictly professional i think that's very challenging i i advise people when you're going through a breakup and you're really in pain to have a season of no contact where you're really not around the person you're not seeing the person because it's really it makes it even more difficult to heal if you're doing business working with this person every day you're seeing them you're contacting them all the time and you're healing and heartbroken it's very it's like you emotionally you're putting yourself through a lot you could try to cut it off but the emotions are there I mean we are spiritual beings you know that's the reality of things you're gonna have feelings you're gonna have feelings and you're gonna have memories and you look at them and feel certain ways. It's just unrealistic to think that you can just continue to heal from that relationship and then deal with that person every day. If you feel like it'll be a challenge, you may need to put a filter in between you and that person. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe work with an assistant or somebody else that can, you know, streamline some of the co- communication between you all. Yes. But ultimately, figure out what, what will be best so that you can still get things done. And even if you all can, if you still want to do business together in general, depending on what type of business situation or whatever Mm -hmm. it is you know determine what the next best steps would be in general definitely because of course if you're dealing with pain and you're feeling a certain way and you're around him he knows what you're dealing he can feel that from you because he can pick it up when you're around him you just gotta guard your heart protect your peace do what's best for you and your healing right now yeah this question is really good. She said, how do you know when you've truly healed from a toxic relationship? You know when you can think about that person. And when you think about them or you see them or they're around you, you have nothing but love and forgiveness. There's no feelings of, oh, I wish you feel my pain or I wish you dealt with what I went through or you have none of that and you even can look at the situation and feel grateful for it and be you know have gratitude towards it because you know that you've grown and you've healed and you're a stronger person because of what you experienced and what you grew out of it yeah I I agree you definitely can tell when you have no no strong feels about about that situation you know when you can move on one of the biggest challenges that people have in in relationships and in life is that people spend so much time trying to understand the situations that happen instead of being able to allow yourself to let those things go as you grow they sit back they try to analyze they try to you know figure out what this what happened here what went wrong there once you get to the point to where you can just let it go and allow yourself to move forward then you really know that you've healed and 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 grown from that situation as opposed to dwelling in it trying to figure it out some of the things are just out of our hands just you know realistically things that that uh you deal with with another person aren't always a reflection of something that you may be dealing with it it could be something that they're dealing with we may not always get the answers for why somebody responded in the way that they responded especially if it's something going on inside them just allowing yourself the grace 
mm-hmm. to move forward and not have to figure out what was that person thinking or why would they do this or why did this transpire like it did. That's good. That's really good. This was so good. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, for sharing your questions. I want to encourage you, make sure that you go and get Learn to Love Yourself Bundle. You get two of my books. You get two virtual webinars, self-love, all of our self-love, emotionally healing from the pain the wounded pain of heartbreak you want to get those and you can get it at realloveexperts.com forward slash back to love i really enjoyed this conversation i hope you guys enjoy the message growing pains overcoming the loss thank you guys for tuning in be sure to share the video tag your friends invite others to join us every monday and friday see you next time we love you guys thanks so much So now I want to hear from you. Write me a comment and let me know what are you growing to in this season in your life? During these growing pain times, what are you evolving to? Also, be sure to like this video and subscribe. Share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next show.